This is a tutorial video for the GCSE physics topic of specific heat capacity. This comes up in both unit one, which is the energy topic, and also unit three, which is the matter topic. In this video, we're just going to look at the calculations around specific heat capacity. There's a separate video that goes through the method for the required practical. By the end of this video, you should be able to define specific heat capacity and understand what it is. You should be able to recall the equation that calculates energy change using specific heat capacity and also know all of the units for the parts of that equation. And you should be able to use a rearranged version of that equation to calculate the specific heat capacity of a particular material. The best introduction to specific heat capacity is to think about a time that you've eaten something that has a pastry outside and then a soft sugary filling, something like a pop tart or a jam tart or an apple pie and you've eaten it when it's come straight out of the oven or straight out of the toaster. You touch the outside of it and you think, yeah, that's cool enough for me to eat. And then you bite into it and you end up burning your mouth. And it feels like the inside is hotter than the outside. Now, obviously that can't be the case. If you've just taken something out of a 200 degree oven, the entire thing has a temperature of 200 degrees. So there can't be a difference in the temperature. But what there is a difference in is the amount of energy stored in the outside pastry and the inside filling. And that's because of something called specific heat capacity. Way back in primary school, you should have been introduced to the idea of capacity, which is the maximum amount of something that an object could hold. So if I look at these two measuring cylinders here, the one on the left has a much larger capacity. It's capable of holding a much larger volume of liquid. Now, in physics, we use the word slightly differently, but you still want to have the idea that capacity is about the maximum amount that you can put into something. So when we talk about heat capacity, we mean the amount of energy that a substance can absorb to cause it to change temperature. So in other words, different materials will require different amounts of energy in order to heat them up. Now, the word specific, when we use it in science, means that we're not just talking about any old object of any old size being heated up by any old amount. It means that we're going for quite distinct quantities. So when we talk about specific heat capacity, this means the energy that one kilogram of a substance needs to absorb in order to heat it up by one degree C. So that brings us back to our Pop-Tart. The pastry shell and the sugary filling have different specific heat capacities. That means that it takes different amounts of energy in order to heat them up to the same temperature. And that means that when you bite into them, even though they are the same temperature, they store different amounts of energy. In a second, we'll look at the equation that you use to calculate the amount of energy required to heat an object up. But this is one of those equations that is actually really quite intuitive. So first, let's just have a look at an example. Here I've got a block of a particular pure substance. And let's say that it has a mass of 5 kilograms. And let's say that its specific heat capacity is 4. We'll worry in a second about what the units for specific heat capacity are, but for now we'll just take the number. So that means that for every one kilogram of this substance, it's going to take four joules to heat it up by one degree. So let's say we want to know how much energy will be required to heat up that block by 10 degrees C. Well, my specific heat capacity tells me that to heat up one kilogram by one degree C, I'll need four joules. So to heat it up by 10 degrees C, I'll need 40 joules. And to heat up my five kilogram block by 10 degrees C, I'll need 200 joules. Hopefully that sort of makes sense to you. And working through that example, we've basically worked out what the formula is that you need to have memorized. Here's the equation that we need in order to calculate the amount of energy required to heat up an object. This is the third equation on the second physics equation sheet, which is the one that you're actually given in the exam. So you don't need to memorize this, which is a bit of a shame because I think it's one of the more intuitive equations that's actually a little bit easier to memorize. But it's worth us having a little look at it anyway, because there are a couple of things in here that you might not have seen before that might trip you up. The first one is this triangle symbol, which is called a delta. Wherever you meet a letter delta in science, it means a change in something. So we've got a change over here on the right hand side with another funny symbol. And this is the Greek letter theta, which in physics stands for temperature. Then on the left, we've got the change in E, which you already know stands for energy. There are two other terms in this equation, 
M stands for mass, and then the C is our specific heat capacity. As usual, you need to know the units for all of these. So energy, of course, is still in joules, mass is still in kilograms, change in temperature is degree C, and then for specific heat capacity, we make the units out of the other units. So the units for specific heat capacity are joules per kilogram degree C. In other words, how many joules are required to heat up one kilogram by one degree C? A straightforward calculation might ask me to calculate the energy required to heat up nine kilograms of copper from 22 degrees to 35 degrees, given that its specific heat capacity is 385 joules per kilogram degree C. Looking at my equation, the first thing I'm going to need to do is to work out what that change in temperature is. So to go from 22 degrees to 35 degrees is a temperature change of 13 degrees C. Now I have all of the terms of the equation, I can substitute these in. So I need to do mass, which is nine kilograms, multiply by specific heat capacity, which is 385, multiply by temperature, which is 13. Temperature change, I should say. If I wasn't sure which term any of those numbers belong to, I could use the units to help me. So for instance, kilograms is always going to refer to mass. If I multiply all of those together, I get an energy change of 45,045. And because this is energy, the units, of course, will be joules. Let's look at some more calculations which all use water, which has a specific heat capacity of 4,180. First, a worked example. We want to calculate the change in energy when five kilograms of water is heated up from three degrees C to 58 degrees C. Firstly, I'm going to write out my equation. The energy change is the mass multiplied by the specific heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. So that's going to be five kilograms multiplied by 4,180 multiplied by 55, which is the change to get from three degrees to 58 degrees. If I multiply those all together, I get 1,149,500, and because this is energy, my units are joules. Pause the video now and have a go at the other four questions on your own. So for each one of these questions, the specific heat capacity is always going to be the same because we're always looking at water, but you need to change the mass and the temperature change each time. So for question one, 10 times 4,180 times by 15, gives us a specific heat capacity of 627,000 joules. Now, I should say at this point that there's a possibility that in the exam, they might ask you to give your answer in kilojoules instead, just because they want to test another part of specification at the same time. So in order to do that, I would divide by 1,000 and I would give my answer as 627 kilojoules. So for question two, we've got 26 kilograms of water and the temperature is changing by 75 degrees. So that gives me an answer of 8,151,000 joules. Then for question three, you should have 5,225,000 joules. And for our final question, 4,180,000 joules. Now, quite often, we don't want to calculate the amount of energy required. We want to use the amount of energy required in order to calculate the specific heat capacity. So we're going to need to take this equation that we've already got and rearrange it. But actually, this is quite straightforward to do if you remember what the units for specific heat capacity are, because we know that they are joules per kilogram degree C. So actually, rather than looking at this and trying to rearrange it, what I might be more likely to do is just say, well, I'm going to take the number in joules, which is energy, and I'm going to divide it by the number in kilograms, which is the mass, multiplied by the number in degree C, which is my change in temperature. If you are more comfortable looking at the equation and trying to rearrange it, then here's that initial equation. And to get specific heat capacity on its own, we need to remove this mass term and this change in temperature term. They're currently multiplying, so to remove them, we need to divide. And of course, whatever we do to the right-hand side of the equation, we also do to the left-hand side of the equation. So this gives me an equation that looks like this. Specific heat capacity is equal to the change in energy divided by the mass multiplied by the change in temperature. 
So a typical exam question might ask me to calculate the specific heat capacity of aluminium if it takes 129,600 joules of energy to raise the temperature of a 24 kilogram block from 22 degrees C to 28 degrees C. So before I start putting anything into my equation, I'm going to need to work out that temperature change, which will be 6 degrees C. And then I can do 129,600 divided by 24, which was the mass, multiplied by 6, which was the temperature change. So that's 129,600 divided by 144, which gives me an answer of 900 joules per kilogram degree C. Here's one more worked example and then five questions for you to have a go at on your own. In this instance, we have a four kilogram block that needs 20,000 joules of energy to heat it from 18 to 28 degrees C. Firstly, I'm going to need my rearranged equation. Looking at this, I can see that I'm going to need the change in temperature. So to go from 18 to 28 degrees C is a change of 10 degrees C. Now I can start substituting in my numbers. Firstly, I need energy. So that's going to be denoted with a J for joules. And then I'm going to need my mass, which is going to be in kilograms. So that must be four. And my change in temperature I've just worked out is 10 degrees C. So 20,000 divided by four times 10, because they're both on the bottom of that um, fraction. And that gives me an answer of 500. And because this is a specific heat capacity, the units are joules per kilogram degree C. Pause the video and have a go at the next five questions yourself. So for question one, we take 9,600 joules of energy and divide that by three, which is the mass, multiplied by four, which is the temperature change. That gives me an answer of 800 joules per kilogram degree C. Then for question two, we get an answer of 650 joules per kilogram degree C. Now question three has something slightly sneaky in it because the mass of my block has been given as 500 grams and that's no good to me. I need to be using those SI units in all my calculations. So before I can go any further, that needs converting to be 0.5 kilograms. That then allows me to work out that the specific heat capacity is 900 joules per kilogram degree C. Then for question four, there's something else that's only a little bit sneaky, but just making sure that you'd spotted that this was a negative number. So my temperature change here was 30 degrees C. That gives me a specific heat capacity of 700 joules per kilogram degree C. And then in my final question, I needed to identify that this answer here, this energy was given in kilojoules rather than joules. So again, that needs converting back to those standard international units before I can do my calculation. So that's going to be 60,000 divided by 12 times 20, giving me a specific heat capacity of 250. How did you get on? Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found that a useful introduction to specific heat capacity calculations. The next step is to watch the video for the specific heat capacity required practical. If you are finding these videos useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE physics coming soon.